Hey everybody, it's Ela, and I am going to be working on a watercolor. The paint that I'm using for this watercolor is known as American Journey, and you can only buy it through CheapJoes.com. So American Journey watercolors, they're good. I like them, and I've actually done a little bit of painting on the picture already, but I'm using a limited palette. I'm just only using these colors to make this picture. So yeah, you do not need a million different colors to paint a picture. If you want green, mix it. If you want orange or brown, mix it. You can make what you need from just a limited palette. Uh, so I have ultramarine blue, so this is a very reddish blue. Joe's yellow is a nice pure yellow. This is uh, Joe's blue, it's actually thalo blue, it's a greenish blue. And then quinacridone red, which will make a great purple and it will also make a decent orange. So you, you have the rainbow right here. And these are very large tubes. The reason why I got such large tubes is, first of all, they're a very good deal. Second of all, I have been making these adorable little tiny tins. And I'm actually going to do a video showing you how to make one of these. This is also something that I plan to offer for uh, my highest tier of Patreons. Uh, so you can check out my Patreon link to learn more about those. And those would only be available for a limited time and it may not have a goofy sticker like this I'm still figuring out the design so here we go on to the painting so I'm going to briefly talk about this watercolor with the original photo thank you Damon Smith Damon Smith took this photo he's a friend of mine he gave me permission to use it Damon is a free jazz bassist and a wonderful musician and if you like experimental jazz man check him out he's awesome you can see i already did a wash on here already and actually i've used all of my colors in this i've got ultramarine blue here you can see these greenish blues i put some thalo in there there's actually some slightly purplish tones in here i put a little bit of red and i put in a little bit of yellow so already we've got all of them going to work and we make even more colors so I'm going to start work from light to dark. So I'm starting off by mixing all three colors. You can see the red, yellow, and blue all together to make a very neutral light color. And you'll notice that most of the painting on this picture is pretty neutral. It doesn't have a lot of dramatic primary or even secondary colors. It's mostly blue and gray, very subtle. And the photograph looks this way. It's more of a study of different values than it is a bright rainbow color type picture. So, you know, you can do that even with three primary colors. You just have to mix like mad, like you see me doing here in this picture. The brush that I'm using right now is a Raphael Quill size four brush. It's a thirsty brush. It holds a lot of paint. I don't have to dip it very often, which I like. And it comes to a pretty nice point. So the main blue that I'm using to make these blues and grays is thalo, the thalo blue. And honestly, if I had to only use one blue, thalo would be the one that I keep because it makes a brilliant purple and a brilliant green. Whereas ultramarine blue, which I really love, but the green it makes tends to be much more kind of a mossy brownish green. And it makes a lovely purple but it's not necessarily any better than the thalo purple. Ultramarine is found in nature, whereas thalo blue is, it, you have to tone it down or else it looks kind of otherworldly. And it is very intense. And while I say it's the main blue I'm using, you'll notice I'm not actually picking up very much paint. It is probably the most staining color you can buy. Literally and figuratively, it will stain your paper, it will stain your clothes, it will stain your fingers. You need very little for it to show up in your painting. So a lot of these other colors that I'm adding to it are just to tone it down because it, it is so brilliant. Even when I want a fairly pure blue, I'm still adding a fair amount of yellow and red just to bring it down a notch so it looks like something that actually exists in nature, you know, more of a, a sea blue as opposed to an electric blue. <laughs> The paper I'm using for this picture is Arches Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper. You can see how the, the layer that I did before, I can do these big washes 
it's just beautiful and even and you know if there's any lights or darks it's because I put it there on purpose there's no resisting of the paint there's no back runs I'm able to control it it does what I want it to do if I do a layer I let it dry and then I do another layer and I'm doing that a lot with this particular picture I swear the second layer takes better than the first one it, it, there's something kind of toothy about the paper. It builds better than any other paper that I've ever tried. This paper's the bomb. So in this picture, I am laying down multiple washes of colors that I have mixed heavily to get from the three primary colors using both ultramarine and phthalo blue. This is a really slow, labor-intensive way to paint. I just get into a meditative state of mixing and laying down color and letting it dry, and then mixing some more and laying down more color and letting it dry. I kind of get into a zone with it. The whole purpose is to paint because I enjoy painting. This isn't a race. A lot of artists like to use convenient colors, colors that they use a lot that come in a tube. That's totally fine. I have my convenience colors that I like to use. You could totally do this picture with a blue straight from the tube and say a Payne's gray. It is more difficult to get very, very dark colors when you mix them from the three primaries because you add a little bit of water each time you add another primary. Also I find that colors that I've mixed do tend to fade a bit when they dry and this depends partially on the pigments. It depends on the paper, but it also is because there is a lot of water in the paint. And the more water there is in the paint, the more that the color tends to lighten up once it's dry. If you're working straight from the tube, you can use the color with very little water added to it. So it's really just the pure color straight and it's consistent every time you dip your brush into the tube. However, if you are willing to mix, you can get the exact color that you want. If you have the skill to mix it and you know what colors to use to get that color and all of your colors will automatically harmonize because you are using the same colors over and over again whether you're using them straight it's going to look good with all your neutrals because you use those primaries to make your neutrals at the very end of this painting i have some punches of red and yellow uh, and they look really good with the gray. Not that most colors don't look good with gray, but they all look like they belong together in the same picture because they're all there. It's just some are concentrated and some are muted down by mixing them with other colors, but there's just something logical th that our brain recognizes. One thing that I love about colors that I mix from the primaries is that you can kind of see little tiny specks of each of those primary colors in your mixed color. Your brain actually has to do a little bit of work mixing those colors together visually to make the final color. It's kind of fun to look at. Um, I find that if you do use a lot of different colors from the tube, if you just, you know, if you're painting a tree and you use a green from the tube and a blue from a tube and you paint the sun yellow from a tube, um, you're going to end up with a childlike picture, which, you know, maybe you like that, or maybe you just really loved intense colors, but it's going to not harmonize in the same way as if you had mixed that green from the same blue that you used to make the sky. It's just going to feel a lot more separate and less like it's all one universe that belongs together. Once again, this is just a theory, not saying you have to work this way but it's something to keep in mind and it's worth playing around with. Just play around, see what, it, what you like and what you don't like and come to your own conclusions. I don't tend to use a lot of masking fluid in general because I find that the lines that I get from masking fluid tend to be a little bit wobbly and inexact and it's just a thicker medium than paint. I find that I can get a much sharper accurate shape with watercolor paint so I prefer to just save those areas that I want to keep white but it is tricky especially when you're starting out and you don't have a lot of confidence in your brush skills. I'm going to give a little talk about the artistic process. This is a topic that comes up a lot in my classes. It's something that comes up I see in the various Facebook watercolor groups that I follow and this is about both mostly I want to focus on people's dissatisfaction with their work. 
and the struggle that we go through trying to make a picture that we want. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is, there's a quote, I don't know who said it first, but they said, the perfect is the enemy of the good. If you're too hung up on being perfect, you're never going to even be able to get good. You need to get over whatever uptightness you have, whatever your, your fantasy is of what your picture is going to look like and let yourself make what actually is going to happen. And yes, you should practice and yeah, you should get better. And yes, you should study technique and watch videos and read books and take classes. But also you are going to make whatever it comes out of your brush right now. And we have this fantasy that someday you will get really, really good. And then everything you do will make you ecstatically happy and it'll look exactly the way you want. Now, <laughs> I've been painting for 35 years. I've been painting since I was about 12 and now I'm 47 years old. And while I do like my work and I do feel satisfaction from my work, it is very common. I mean, I usually when I'm starting a picture, especially when I'm doing the drawing, the first thought that comes out of my head as I'm doing the drawing is I could have done that better. I notice the things that could have been better or the, that it don't look the way that I think they should. This is after all these years. And at this point, I just treat it like part of the process. This is just part of the ride. It's just, it's human nature doesn't mean that I hate my picture, doesn't mean that I reject or that I'm a failure or anything like that. It just means that this is a common neurotic trait that human beings have where we feel dissatisfied. It's like a habitual pattern of, you know, you, you, you make something and it doesn't have to be painting. It could be anything. And then there's that little bit that you could have done better. And you can't let those voices stop you. You have to just keep going and just paint anyway. Just keep doing anyway. If you let those voices stop you, then, you know, there's no point. Why, what's, why, what are you doing this for? You know, it's, it's just neurotic. It's just our neurotic minds. Um, I, I think about meditation a lot. You know, you sit, you meditate, you wonder, are you, are you actually meditating? <laughs> what's going on in our heads? Am I just wasting my time? This is just another form of that. We're, we're sitting here, we're, we're, we're wasting money on paint and paper and uh, making a mess, and that's fine. It's not a problem. Also remember, this is something we're doing for fun. This is a recreational process that we're doing. And it's not, while we do want a pretty picture at the end of the road, having a pretty picture is not the point of painting. If you want a pretty picture, go buy a pretty picture. You know, if you really want something to look exactly like the photograph, you've already got the photograph. You don't need to paint it. <laughs> if you know, I mean, no, no, no disservice to any photorealistic painters out there, but it's easy to get really hung up on, uh, what the image is that we've gotten started. That's getting us started. And, um, no, you're going to make something new. And there's going to be surprises. There's going to be happy accidents, as they like to say. And that's part of the process. You're on an unexpected journey with a piece of paper and paint and a brush in your hand. And you don't know exactly how this is going to turn out. And that's the whole point. It's okay. It's okay to have a goal and it's okay for it to turn out differently from that goal. Think of that image that you're painting from as something that got you started. We think we're going to go there, but no, it's, it's just a catalyst that got you started. There it is. And there's that uncomfortable point where you realize that you have left the original intention and now you're going in a new direction. And that's, that's what we're doing. That's most of painting for me. And, you know, I have to remember this over and over and over again. I forget every time I think it's going to be, yes, I'm going to paint it exactly like that. Nope. Here we go again. We're making a right turn. So, <laughs> and I, here's another piece. If I try to repaint something thinking, well, the last picture didn't turn out how I wanted. I'm going to try it again this time. And this time it's, it's going to be really perfect. 
there's something about that element of risk that I've lost that trying to nail it down and really make it perfect this time somehow it doesn't turn out as well as when I'm willing to when there's just that element of mystery and risk and surprise that's where the good stuff happens in my experience anyway so there it is <laughs> that's my rant that's something I talk about with my students it's something I, I have to tell myself and I hope you find it helpful too if you have no idea what I'm talking about awesome power to you but to everyone else who uh, it feels like I've, I've peeked into their brain I hope I hope this is helpful all right and the painting is finished I'm very pleased with it now but you would be interested to know that I wasn't sure how I felt about it when it was first done and this is a really common thing you know sometimes you have to set things aside then pull it out sometimes you work on it some more it, I don't know there's something about the process where you have to take breaks and come back and that includes me making videos I actually had to put away the editing process on this video for a couple days and then it came back to it and all of a sudden the rest of the editing came much more easily if you have enjoyed this video I make a new watercolor video every month you can go to my website there's a link in the description box below you can look at recipes more examples of my paintings and uh, I also send a newsletter once a month with even more cool things that I do and updates on classes so and I have a Facebook group this is new a new Facebook group it's called Ela's watercolor group it's a private group I uh, hope you will check all those things out and I will see you next month bye bye Thank you.